Hi, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about getting access to Maya or 3DS Max. Both of these are Autodesk products and there's a couple different ways that you can get access. One is being a student or an educator at a secondary or post-secondary, so college or university, high school, college or university uh, institutions. So if you teach at those or you're a student at one of those, you can get Maya and 3ds max as well as a whole host of other autodesk software for free under a student license now the student license will limit you to only being able to use it for learning and for education you cannot use it for uh, monetizing your projects you can't make projects and sell them your projects will actually um, every time you open them will have a uh, little disclaimer at the beginning saying that that model was made using a student version of Maya or 3ds Max so um, that is the difference between that license and then the other alternative which is um, an indie license there's also a third alternative which is pay the full price um, and we'll talk about that in a second as well what the indie license does is that the indie license allows you to use Maya or 3ds Max and uh, be able to purchase it at a significant reduction from the full uh, cost license which has no restrictions on it and the full cost uh, license is for Maya is $1,700 so um, and here in America the uh, full the indie license for Maya is $280 for your first subscription and then when it auto renews it redu renews at a reduced rate of $250 so um, that's just uh, something to think about now with the indie license there is a caveat that uh, you have to be eligible, and part of that eligibility means that you're making under $100,000 with your projects. So anything creative that you're using Maya for and you're selling, you have to make less than $100,000 a year, and that would be Maya or 3DS Max for the indie license. The full license is $1,700, there are no restrictions. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at, um, first, how to get it for free if you're a student or an educator and let's go ahead and jump on into that okay so right here is where i'm going to start at right here at autodesk.com autodesk is the maker of 3ds max and maya if you didn't already know that now a couple different ways to get to the student part of this you can scroll down and if you do that somewhere on the landing page this initial page the landing page you will find something about education. Uh, in the past, it's been a big banner. Now they've turned, uh, connected it down to this, a small box or a box um, with a header in it. So basically, it's gonna be somewhere on here. Another place to find it is right here under products and educational access. Now I'm gonna start here because this particular link is gonna take us to a couple pages in between before going directly to the getting the software which is this will take you right to getting the software but I want to talk about a couple of things first as we move in that direction so right here uh, again it's another another page it's going to talk more about their products and the education community uh, gives you some more information up here and you can also get some help watch some videos on it a lot of information on here interesting stuff we'll scroll down to these three boxes okay and these three boxes um, give you a little bit more information depending on which category you're in for administrators administrators if you're watching this uh, you can get Maya uh, for free a uh, large-scale license this allows you to put it on multiple computers uh, in your computer labs now, this is what we've done at my school district and it's worked out quite well uh, for educators if you want to get a personal license uh, a, a licensed copy without having to pay for Maya, you can do that as well as an educator. Again, it's got the same limitations. You can't obviously sell your work, um, and it's just for education only, but it allows you to have a copy on a personal computer at home or something like that. And then for students, this is where I'm gonna go ahead and jump in at, because most everybody's probably a student that's watching this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one, learn more, and it's pretty much the same information for educators anyway. Um, if you scroll down, again, this page has a lot of information on it. But right here is where we want to stop. Uh, we want to talk about confirming your eligibility for access uh, to the education, Autodesk education plan, okay? 
First things you need to do is if you don't already have an Autodesk account, you'll need to create an account. If you click on that, uh, it takes you to this very same page, which is the page that uh, the other link would have taken you to. Okay, now we're gonna jump back from there for a second. One of the things you need to talk about is confirming your eligibility, okay? So again, we'll click on that. And this is actually pretty informative. If you're gonna have to uh, prove that you're a student or an educator, these are some things you need to think about, uh, some documentation you need to provide. Okay, the, uh, it talks about what it is in here. Uh, you need to, um, right here, you will, need, uh, you will not be able to access the software in an education plan until your eligibility is confirmed and be sure the process of confirming your eligibility uh, early enough to make sure you have access when class starts, okay? So again, you need to make sure that if this is something, you, especially at the university, a lot of the high schools will have this in the computer labs your students are working on. Um, but you may need to have a personal copy of it as a college student, so you're gonna need to make sure you can get access to it. Um, so this right here, if your school is not already listed as a qualified educational institution, it may, it may take seven days or more to validate it. Um, so you'll need to go through that process. So when you go in there looking for your school, you're going to have to make sure you ha first have your school name correct, spelled correctly, and it's the entire, the full name of it, or some variation of it, because one of the things about my school was uh, it was listed as a full name of the school, but students are used to it only by the short name. So we had to make sure that they found our school under the correct full name. So make sure you're doing that. Okay. Um, also, while you're waiting for this, you are eligible to go ahead and get a free 30-day trial. You can download the free trial and try that out. That might cover you while you're still trying to get your school uh, stuff taken care of. Okay. Documentation, make sure that it has your full name. Okay, a full name of the institution and a date with the current school term. If it's a past school term, they're not gonna give this to you. If it's a future school term, you're not gonna get access to it either until that date arrives, so keep that in mind as well. Okay, then uh, you'll need to have your tuition, your school ID, transcripts, or something like that, okay? So make sure that these are the documentations that you can provide, you're gonna need to scan them in, you need a way of being able to upload them so that they can have access to them. My students have had pretty good success using a student ID, and in fact, I use my employee ID to get my educator access through Autodesk. So that is something that works pretty well. These other things, registration receipts and things like that. Now make sure your ID, your student ID, has the current school year on it, okay? If it's a past student ID and it's expired, this is not gonna work for you, okay? All right, so if you have any other questions about it, you can come in here, this is, find this page, and read through the information you need to know, okay? All right, so with that, then we can go to get products and it's gonna take us to that same page. And then basically from here, you're gonna sign in. So I am gonna go ahead and do that because if you click on the get started, um, it's gonna take you through the process of creating an account, okay? Hopefully you've already done that. If you have not, click the get started and create an account. And again, you need your educational role in there. You'll need to find your country and then the type of school that is going to be. If you're a student and your institution type is high school or college, you're going to need to put in a birth date. As an educator, they don't ask us our birthdays, just where we're teaching, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and back out of here, pull this off here for a second and sign in. Um, because the next page, once you get your account and you get it, set up and you sign in, what you're going to do is it's going to take you to this right here, okay? And you'll see this. Now mine says get product. This is what it looks like once you have approval and you're approved in the uh, in Autodesk to download software. And you can see that uh, you have access to quite a few, if not all, of the software. The main ones we're looking for is 3ds Max and Maya. Um, there is also Motion Builder as well as a uh, mud box in here. Um, there is the creator, character creator, creator, uh, character generator rather. So those are some pretty cool ones to have access to. So, uh, but it will say get product. For those of you that have not yet been approved and you're still starting this process, it's gonna say get started here or something like that. So when you click on get started, 
it's going to take you to that part where you're going to have to provide that documentation and prove that you are a student. If you haven't done that already and you get this far and it says get started, that's what it's going to do. So once you get that and you get approved, you'll get an email that says you're approved, um, then you can come back in here and it'll say get product and you can download the product. And for Maya, get product, you're going to pick your operating system. You'll have access to several different years to choose from so you can match what your institution is using. That's important because Maya is not backwards compatible typically. Okay, And then uh, also your language. And then you'll click on install. You'll have different choices of install. You can do a uh, download or you can do a, a browser based uh, install. All right, so that is it for students and educators. That should get you on your way. If you have any issues, you can always uh, drop me a question in this uh, video link and I will try to get back to you and help you uh, resolve it. Um, I don't know everything, but I've seen quite a few things with students over the last couple of years since uh, Autodesk has started implementing this. The next thing, for those of you who don't qualify but don't mind spending about $300 on a license, then you can do the indie license. And let me come back in here and I am going to sign out real quick because I want to be able to show you this. And when I did my trial run of this, it kept adding things to my inbox or to my uh, purchase box. All right, so here, if you go to makeanything.autodesk.com backslash Maya dash indie, that's pretty long. Another way to get to it is in Google or some sort of search engine, type in Maya Indie, and it should pop up with a link to this right here, makeanything.autodesk.com Maya dash indie, and it is the same for 3ds Max, except at the end it says 3ds Max dash indie. Now, it is available in quite a few countries, and the first step is making sure that you find the country that you're eligible in, and then it's going to ask you, are you eligible? So you can scroll down, and right here, this is it right here. Your annual gross revenue from creative work must be less than 100,000 US dollars. Um, you may not use the license on any product valued at over $100,000. So in other words, if uh, you're collaborating or even contracted to work and they're going to pay you $110,000 for this job, you are not qualified to use this license. You have to buy a full license. Okay. You can only use one, one subscription. I'll let you read the rest of this on your own. If you have any questions about it, you can click here to look at the questions and answers. Okay, so if you say you're eligible, I'm going to pull this over for a second because I don't know what it's going to do when I click on that. All right, then it pops up again. It says, get my indie today. Okay. And it did not log me in automatically. Good. All right, so once you get there, you should see something like this. It'll say Maya for indie users. It's a one-year subscription. And here in the U.S. right now, it is $280 um, to purchase it. You'll need to sign in. So you will also need to have an Autodesk account, of course. And then you'll put in your payment down here. And you'll go through the process. You'll just follow the, the typical purchase steps for purchasing it. And then... Um, you'll go back into your account in Autodesk to uh, download it. Now, the thing I did notice is that um, the initial price is $280, but once you've purchased it inside of your, it'll do an auto renew, and you can turn off auto renew if you don't want to do an auto renew, but uh, it does seem to give you a discount for renewing. Um, the initial purchase price was $280 here, and then it's $250 for uh, next year's renewal, so it's a $30 reduction for next year. I don't know why there's a difference, but um, it seems to be something I've discovered. Uh, I've been using the uh, Indie version for a couple of years uh, since they started it. This is the first year that they have an auto renew that you didn't have to turn off because in the past, if you didn't turn off the Indie auto renew, it would renew at the full $1,700 or whatever Maya was at the time um, price tag. So you had to make sure you turn it off. But this year, um, it's the first year I've noticed that you can have auto renew left on and um, you should be able to uh, auto renew at a reduced price. So that's great news. And again, it's the same thing for 3ds Max, the same process. You'll find your country, make sure you're eligible. So um, again, uh, if you have any questions, you can certainly uh, put them in my 
down in the questions uh, for this video. And if I know the answer, I will uh, give you the answer. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you and I'll try to help you uh, or point you in the right direction to find the answer out. Um, but uh, two different methods, students and educators, you can get this for free. And for those of you that are actually wanting to, um, besides just hobbies, because it down here it says, you know, graduates, freelancers. So for freelance work, and for 3D artists who are making less than $100,000 um, working on projects and things uh, and you want your own personal copy, this is a great way to do that and uh, be able to work and uh, make an income. For students and uh, educators, it's great to be able to have it for free and to be able to practice. So that's a great thing about this. I know there are other software uh, like Blender, for example, that are for free, but you're going to run into um, cases where lots of uh, places that you might end up working aren't using Blender, they're using Maya, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, some of the other uh, software that's out there. Um, not to say that there's anything wrong with Blender, but uh, I do teach a little bit of Blender at school, but um, mostly I focus on Maya or 3ds Max, not so much 3ds Max anymore, but mostly Maya, uh, just because of that. So again, anyway, um, if you do uh, like what you saw, please like my video. You can also subscribe to my channel to check out some of my content. I always forget which finger to put up here. And uh, check me out at Putting on the Fritz 3D Visualization. I have uh, Unreal Engine stuff on there, Unity stuff, uh, Maya stuff. So go ahead and check it out. Subscribe to my channel. Like the video. I'll see you next time.